What is up, everybody? Still uh, rocking and rolling this fall. Finished up harvest. Uh, I think last week's video I did on uh, chisel plowing with the Steiger and the Glencoe. I'm starting to get gray hair. Um, now we've just been going full bore on tillage and trying to get stuff cleaned up, put away before the weather turns to crap like it always does in November. Um, I got Mrs. G to take a day off of work today. She is running the Steiger chiseling with the 530. B DMI. Um, I kind of destroyed the Glencoe chisel uh, two days ago. I was running it and uh, didn't realize the bearings went out on one of the disc gangs and it clanked around till it broke the arbor bolt and broke the mount that holds the bearing to the frame. And, and then I folded it or lifted it up and took off down a main highway to take it home to switch to the DMI and uh, I blew one of the tires on the ripper on the highway so that was awesome also I drove it on the rim until I got to the next field entrance but um, Mrs. G's ripping some bean stubble out here that I no-tilled into the corn stalks last fall and um, I had a video I was out here combining this and I said it was going to be a real good yield test between this and right across the road I had uh, chisel plowed the corn stalks last fall planted both fields same day same variety of beans no different fung I didn't put fungicide on either of them I've had a lot of people ask me in the comments uh, how the yield difference was between this field and no-till and uh, chisel plowed and field cultivated field. Um, it's like 12 bushels the acre average, better. Um, that's, you know, at $10 beans, that's $120 an acre better. Now, I know there's some no-tillers that are going to jump down my throat about this but I'm not saying that's that's how it always is by any means but this year um, we were really dry in June and I think the the extra residue and all of that I think it just made the beans struggle to uh, get any growth on them whereas across the road they didn't have uh, all that residue to, to deal with or slow them down and then we got a bunch of rain in July and I think this uh, this field was just always that much farther behind that's that's my uh, story and I'm sticking to it so anybody that wanted to know that on the yield uh, that's what it ended up at I am running the the JCB skid steer with my Loftness rock picker this thing works pretty darn good. You just pull up to a rock and flip it into the, the basket here. Here, let's get out and take a look, shall we? Loftness quick pick. Um, I think this one's a 72 inch, that's why it's a 720 model. Yeah, you just pull up to it. Here, let me zoom you out. Just pull up to a rock, lower lower your tines down, or whatever spikes, and then you hit a button and flip them in there. Yeah, you end up getting crop residue and everything else too, but then whenever the basket's full, you go dump it, start over again. I recommend dumping it before it's like super full because then the next time you pull up to another rock and try to flick it in, a whole pile of them fall out and then you sit there trying to collect all your rocks again. 
I'm ripping this farm. I'm not gonna rip it past that last line because it, it gets into quite a few ravines and I don't want it to, to get that, have that wash bad. But this farm hasn't been ripped, I don't know, three or four years. And the DMI is doing just a, oh, extreme close up. Um, it's doing a really nice job uh, of burying the, the corn stalks from last year and the, let me back out here and all the bean stubble. Um, I had a pretty, pretty heavy uh, spread of fertilizer put down on this to, uh, so that'll incorporate all that into the ground and break up all the compaction from the last handful of years of crops. Um, and this, uh, soil will warm up a lot faster next spring at planting time without all of this this mat of you know two years of crop residue out here so that's why I'm doing it it helps for sure but oh you know, these old DMIs they they may not do the most, well, it's kind of rough behind them a lot of the times, but they are ripping bastards. I mean, they, they do a really good job of ripping and they're really good for farms with rocks because if you bend or break one of the blades, you don't have to take a whole gang off. You just change one, you know, unbolt one blade and throw a new one on, so. The lovely Mrs. G go by here. total in that chisel plow yeah and that was I put new tires on it everything I think yeah, about seven grand in there or you could go buy like an 870 that um, I don't know fifty sixty thousand dollars pull it with your six hundred thousand dollar freaking quad track uh, no thanks no, thank you. All right, let's go pick up some more rocks, shall we? I farm a 
whole lot of farms along Route 39 here. And years ago, the lovely state of Illinois planted oak trees, you know, all along their fence. I like oak trees. But now they've claimed, I don't know, roughly six rows of my field from end to end. And it's this way on all of my farms along this stretch of road. Hey, Illinois. I know our state has a whole lot of money. <laughs> Maybe you should come and maintain all of this shit. <clears throat> because I'm thinking about getting one of them like side boom uh, skid steer tree mowers but I just don't feel like I should be the one that has to give them all a haircut you know well I had to take a break from bouncing around in that skid steer for a little bit so Jumped in the 7110. Doing some bush hogging. I try to uh, mow the waterways and stuff this time of the year. If I have time at the end of fall, because I can't get out to these waterways uh, while the crop is planted or growing. So gives me a chance once a year to come out here and mow, mow them down and mow the weeds down. Makes everything look a lot better. If you're new to the channel, this 7110 Magnum I'm driving right now, I bought it right before fall. And there's a There's a really good video on the story behind this one. It's a very nice tractor, original paint and everything. The older gentleman that I bought it from, he had this cab cam monitor put right here and there's a camera on the back of the cab. I don't really dig that. I mean, it's kind of like right in my line of vision, so, or line of sight. That's gonna go away. The only problems that I've had with this fuel gauge is funky. I need to figure that out. And this has a hydraulic seat in it. The original Magnums had hydraulic seats. It sinks down and then charges back up and you rev the tractor up and the seat goes higher, you idle it down, the seat goes lower. And I've got a whole brand new seat assembly at home, sitting in the shop for it. Convert it to air instead of hydraulic. These things, if any, any of you know, or have handled one of them, they are incredibly heavy and awkward. Not looking forward to trying to drag it out the door without messing up any of the mint interior in here. They quit making parts for these hydraulic seats a long time ago. I just as soon go with an air seat. I had the bat wing all cleaned up put away because I didn't figure I was going to have time to do jobs like this, but I'm glad that I had time since I'm going to mow quite a bit here with it in the next couple days. All the jobs that you hope to be able to do but normally don't work out. God, I love this tractor. Everybody asks about these fenders. I don't, I don't know where they came from. They're, they're custom made. But I like them. Doesn't that look better? Way, way better. Any of my longtime viewers 
might know that I had a brand new John Deere Batwing that I uh, bought it new and ran it three years maybe. Well, I sold it this year for good money. And I bought this woods that was owned by the same gentleman that owned this. Worked out perfect. Put money in my pocket. Have a really nice battling. Just like I bought his XT190 Alice and two of his wagons. Just like, it amazes me. Like, I mow this top bank of this ditch once a year after harvest when I can go at it this way. And these freaking trees Just grow in one year. Whoops. Not anymore. See, you gotta do this stuff, otherwise the whole freaking edge of the field turns into solid trees in a ditch. Alright, I needed a break from bouncing around in that skid steer, so we decided to come ride around with Mrs. G. She's rocking this field. Done a whole bunch of it. Yeah, we have. I'm glad to have company. I was getting bored. Yeah. Do you have any deep thoughts that you want to talk about, Mrs. G? Any any things that you want to I do not. Tell, I'm, tell I'm very your... glad you saw my big rocks I pulled up. Gorgeous out. Nice yeah. day to not be at work. Yes. Very productive day for us. It's supposed to rain uh, a lot. We need it bad. Um, so it's what, the first of November today? It is. Rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's Friday starting. I think tomorrow night, Saturday night or Sunday morning, all the way through Tuesday, I think we're supposed to get anywhere from like two, two to four inches of rain is what they're saying. So we got like an inch and a half of rain, uh, I don't know, a week ago. And that, that has helped out with the tillage drastically, but yeah, it's working up really good out here. It it pulls down pretty hard on some of these hillsides or a here. Up on the headlands. Oh yeah, where all the it's a little rough. Grain cart and the semis and everything is driven. So she's running about five and a half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. likes driving tractor, right? I do actually. She's very good at it. I try. She used to drive the nice tractors when we had nicer, newer stuff. I honestly don't notice a difference at all. That is that is quite awesome because you had heated leather seat and all of that kind of stuff before, but big deal. I was melting in here today, so I have the air on. I don't need heat. We like our old equipment. You know what I like? Random people drive by and wave just because you're in a tractor. <laughs> uh, exactly. Better hold it on here. Yeah. I'm sitting on a tiny little plastic. Yeah, that seat blows. <laughs> Not much of a seat. <laughs> my back was hurting from bouncing in the skid steer riding on this little plastic seat bouncing against the glass is, is much better alright I shouldn't admit this but I was spacing out a couple rows ago that's not to be uh, good <laughs> and I looked back and I didn't even have the children down <laughs> jeez I was like half a row down and I went oh crap <laughs> 
wish I could have seen that. I was looking around hoping you didn't see. <laughs> You're probably thinking, man, this pulling really easy this round. Enjoying the fresh air and sunshine. Yeah. And, yep. Not getting anything done that round. <laughs> it's going to take a long time to get this field done that way. Oh my God. So, let's see. Next Tuesday is election day. Um, oh yeah, I have a lot. Yeah. Mrs. G even gets the day off to go vote. We have complete faith in our government <laughs> that th this election is going to go smoothly. There's not going to be any any kinds of uh, nonsense or anything like that. Get out there and vote, people. I mean, we live in Illinois, so we might as well just crap in a bag and put it in the voter's <laughs> box because it doesn't matter. It, it's, yeah. Oh, but it does. Yeah. So, anyway. It's I, Jack's first year. He gets to vote. Oh, yeah. Jack He's gets to vote. He's pretty excited. Yes, he is. Never seen an 18-year-old so into politics. Uh, yeah. I hate politics. I do too, but he's smart on it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully everything works out all right. But, uh, I don't know. We're going to run a couple more hours today and then go to our local uh, bar, joint. bar or restaurant that we love so much. They are amazing. Go have some, some drinks and dinner. And, uh, it all over again out here tomorrow so thanks everybody for watching you can see with the glare <laughs> have a good one guys good night Bye.